Hello my lovely ravens and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantelle and this month I'm going to create Dumbledore's office in 1 12th scale. This is the second video in the series. If you've missed the first video, please check it out in the description box below or in the iCard section in the top right hand corner. Like I said in the previous video, every week I'll try to complete one element of this project. But if that doesn't get finished that week, I won't rush it. The following week you will see the rest of that particular segment and then I'll move on to the next part. This week I've started building the lower tier. This project takes up all of my time and it involves a lot of measuring, cutting, more measuring, making sure I've got the right scale and of course constructing this enormous project. I started by measuring the floor plan of Dumbledore's office. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you would like to purchase it. Initially I was going to use these placemats and coasters for the base, but they were simply too small. I've sketched out the footprints of the three tiers of the office, and at this point I realized how massive this project was going to be. This is going to involve a lot of cardboard and time. The lower tier is what I'll be concentrating on in this video. The large lower tier is 50 centimeters in diameter, the mid tier is 45 centimeters and the top tier is 35 centimeters in diameter. I measured out where approximately the second tier would start and where the steps to the second tier must go by looking at the angle on the floor plans and taking that same angle for the 1 12 scale floors. I stuck the floors together with masking tape, traced around the second tier and cut out that part from the lower tier. And whilst I was at it, I did the same for the top tier. In last week's video I announced that later this year I'm going to build the first of the four Harry Potter common rooms and I want to give you the opportunity to participate by creating miniature books to go into the common rooms. I will link to the community post in the description box below so you can read up about what you need to know about it if you would like to participate. For the base of all the tiers I decided to go with a very thick corrugated cardboard. I thought this was going to be too flimsy, but with the walls stuck to the sides and the flooring in it is actually really sturdy. The walls I made from nappy boxes. Over the last two years I've just saved them up as they make pretty good removal boxes. But as we're not moving anytime soon I decided to use these for the walls. I made sure the corrugation, the lines that you can see on the cardboard, goes vertical. This way I can roll the cardboard and shape it around the shape of the floor. The more you manipulate the cardboard the more flexible it becomes and more easy it becomes to work with. To make sure I have the right dimensions, I used masking tape to temporarily tape the walls to the base. After remeasuring, I found out that the walls needed to be even higher. And so I cut out another strip of cardboard and stuck that to the top of the existing wall to give it more height. The height of the base tier is 58 centimeters. Then the more fun part began, measuring out where the windows, the fireplace, the door and the cabinet should go. 
Most of the lower wall is taken up by these elements and I wanted to make sure I measured them out on the flat surface before gluing the wall to the floor. So I took the construction apart again to measure things out and map out all the elements. I created a half arch template for the top of the windows so they are both consistent in size. After all the measuring, it's time to cut out the windows and the door. And moving on to another fun part, putting the flooring in. But before the fun part starts, I will have to cut up all these pieces. I am using simple craft foam that's available at most craft stores and cut them into rectangle shapes, approx 2 by 3 centimeters in size. Because I'm gluing them on with hot glue, they stick instantly and this will also give the base more strength. After covering half the floor, I'm cutting off the excess. This can be done with scissors as it's soft material and it really works up fast. When the entire floor is covered and the excess cut off, it's time to put the walls back in place and glue them to the floor. It's very hard to see what I'm actually doing here, but I'm basically just going around the sides with a hot glue gun to glue the walls to the base. Because the wall is made from a box, it has a fold where the box was folded before and the top part is held together with tape as that is the extended part. To give the walls a little bit more strength, I'm going to embellish the outside walls with horizontal strips of cardboard. This way there is a bit more of a structure and interest on the outside walls and it adds a strength to the project. If you've been around on my channel for a while, you know I like to use egg cartons for the walls. They are basically a free craft supply, they have a lot of texture and they paint up easily. Over the last months we have been saving a lot of these boxes and I'm using them to cover the inside walls. The approx size of the wall bricks is about the same size as the floor tiles, but they vary a little bit in size. I'm leaving all the general measurements for you in the description box below. And then, with hot glue, I'm gluing on the bricks, one by one. I'm using hot glue because it adds that bit of plastic to the cardboard. I 
tried to stay away from PVA glue because it is a wet glue and because I'm also going to paint the project, for the glue I'm trying to stay away from wet media as much as possible. Now that we have the whole wall covered with bricks, it's time to put a layer of Mod Podge on. The Mod Podge I'm using is black because I've added some black ink. It makes for a great colored base coat and sealer in one. Let's leave this to dry and let's move on to the final part of this week's video. I'm going to create windows from cereal boxes and plastic that comes from a cake tray. I am taking the large sides of the cereal box, sand the shiny sides and glue them together with Fabri-Tac glue. This glue is perfect for paper projects that need strong adhesion but also need to dry quickly. I'm tracing one of the cutouts of the windows on the cereal box. I'm then positioning the plastic and the traced window frame to see where they will go. The pieces I have are not long enough to cover the entire window, so I have to break it up with horizontal parts in the window frame. After measuring out where the plastic will go, I draw out the frame by measuring one centimeter in and one centimeter outwards from the window cutout. That way the window will fit perfectly onto the cutout in the wall. Then it's time to cut out the frames and then, of course, some more egg carton bricks that go around the frames and then glue them on. I'm using wood glue to glue on the bricks and then put a layer of Mod Podge to seal everything in. The Mod Podge makes the cardboard kind of like rubber. It felt that way and it was bendable that way. It was really weird. I'm gluing on the plastic sheets on the back of the window frames with Fabri-Tac glue. I'm using all these different glues where I think they would perform best. I always have a bottle of wood glue and Fabri-Tac glue near me when I'm creating. When the windows are stuck on, I'm going in with a permanent fine liner to draw the details of the windows. I just have to follow the embossed pattern in the plastic. Any unwanted lines can be cleaned up with some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. And then it's just a matter of gluing the completed windows into place. 
Just to let you know, this is not the final color of the floor or the walls. And this is it for part two of this video series. Next week, I will be back with you for the continuation of the build of Dumbledore's office. And I hope you like where this is heading so far. If you would like to support me, you can do so by signing up for my Patreon. You can find the link in the end card of this video or in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome. Please don't forget you can click the subscribe button to become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.